श्री कालिकेश नारायण सिंह जी अरे सुना को समझा भाषण ने ठीक है कौन समझा कौन नहीं समझा सर थोड़ा हाउस को ऑर्डर में लाइए थैंक यू थैंक यू चेयरमैन सर सर दिनेश जी के भाषण के बाद उनके शायर शायरी के बाद उनके गाना और इंटरेस्टिंग इंसिडेंट्स जो वो कोट कर रहे थे उसके बाद कोई भी भाषण देगा तो फाका पड़ जाएगा लेकिन मैं दिनेश जी के जो मूल तथ्य था उनका जो उनका कंटेंशन था कि रेलवेज को सोशल ऑब्लिगेशन को ज़्यादा और खुद के फाइनेंशियल वायबिलिटी को कम देखना चाहिए उससे मैं थोड़ा डिफर करता हूँ और शायद माई आउटलुक इज लिटल फर्दर ऑन आई वुड हैव आई वुड लाइक टू सी द रेलवेज कंटिन्यू फॉर द नेक्स्ट थर्टी फोर्टी फिफ्टी हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स एंड फॉर दैट चेमन सर इट इज असेंशियल एट वी हैव अ फाइनेंशली वायबल रेलवेज एंड दैट्स वाई आई वॉज हैप्पी एंड द रेल मिनिस्टर कोटेड इन हिज स्पीच एट ही इज सीकिंग टू स्ट्रीम लाइन न्यू प्रोजेक्ट्स not earn claps while attempting to ensure that the railway serves a better purpose for the nation as a whole the reason why we have a separate rail budget chairman sir is not because of any british india influences in 1922 the aquat committee concluded that building a railway for any nation is essential for its growth and you cannot have a railways as part of a general budget because the government seeks to impose its own policies its own desires on on an otherwise financially viable railway platform therefore it was only after that that the railway budget was segregated from the general budget but sir when the honorable minister says and he is not looking for populism we have to look at his budget to see whether he is actually walking his talk or is he just committing himself to rhetorics as has been the case many times before sir the railway minister increased his fare a few days before the budget a lot of members here have objected to the fashion in which the rail fares have been increased the reason as he himself has categorically told is that the gross operating profit of the railways is a mere 6% and certainly when you compare that to almost a 40 45% in canada it's an absolute shame we are going structurally and fundamentally wrong somewhere there is no doubt about that but sir to increase our operating profits we can either increase revenues we can either cut costs or we can optimize the existing resources unfortunately the the rail minister has talked about only increasing the rates even while increasing fares he has been in my view politically populist for the reason that and let my friends from mumbai not mind this but in mumbai in the suburban fares which which has the maximum amount of contribution to the passenger traffic he has rolled back the fare height now let me give you some example rail mantri ji reliance which is started above metro line charges rupees 40 for 11 kilometers whereas your passenger on a season pass pays rupees 9 for 65 kilometers on one hand the people of mumbai are willing to pay rupees 40 for 11 kilometers but you as a government have decided not to charge them more than 9 rupees for 65 kilometers if that is not political popul populism sir i ask you what is it just the fact that mumbai is going for election maharashtra is going for election and the minister sacrifices his entire premise for which he doesn't want any claps sir one of the main reasons that we have very high operating costs in the indian railways is the fact that the existing infrastructure 
suffers from a lack of productivity and transparency. We are a monopoly, sir. It is more incumbent on the Indian Railways to be more productive, to match up to international standards, to try and compare. They can't compare with anything domestically, but they have to compare with the developed world. However, in his entire budget speech, I have not heard him even mention once of raising productivity. For a fundamental rail budget speech, it is absolutely essential that, in, especially in a monopolistic condition where we believe that the Indian Railways must work as a conjunction, as a department, not as, as a corporate, not in terms of our separate corporates, to serve a larger social obligation, it is absolutely essential that productivity is increased. Otherwise, the fare hikes, the increase in freight, increase in rates for passengers is just paying for the inefficiencies of the railway department, not for any genuine increase. Because if you have 50% of your outlay going into pay, paying salaries, whereas the world average is 20, 25, 30%, we are doing something wrong. I am willing to pay, I am willing to allow my constituents or the people of my nation, the poor of my nation, to pay where it is genuinely required to have the railways up and running for the next 50 years. I am not willing to allow my constituency to pay increased rates in railway fare if successive past railway ministers have put in 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people, given them jobs from their constituencies. I am not here to allow my constituency to pay for their political largesses. So it is absolutely essential. An operational audit is conducted to determine which divisions in the Indian Railways, which aspects of the Indian Railways conform to international efficiency standards and which are being frittered away. We sir, expect we expect an answer from this. I'll give you an example, sir. Most rail trains in the world, the last bogey, where we have a man sitting with a jhanda, with a flag, where he says a green flag, red flag. Most trains in the world have a light or a signaling system, which automatically signals that the last bogey has passed to the station manager. But in 60 years of having the largest railway network, having one of the biggest railway markets in the world, we have been unable to mechanize ourselves into even the small matters. How do we expect to compete with China to develop new technologies when we are unwilling, not unable. We are unwilling to innovate, we are unwilling to mechanize, and we are unwilling to look at global markets for our uh, directional growth. Sir, in the entire speech of the railway minister, he has not talked about exports. Now we know China, and I take what Mr. Trivedi was saying, that we should not compare ourselves to China. However, Recently, China has supplied 100 locomotive engines to South Africa. Why is it that Indian pro railway production companies, those which have been set up with joint ventures since the 1950s with German, American, other joint ventures, why are we not being able to compete with global markets? Why are we not being able to develop technologies for ourselves? We buy off-the-shelf products. We are spending 17,000 crores, or so that was the figure in the last financial year for fog vision for safety mechanism, which the Honorable Minister... That is correct. What I was telling that, like China government support... Please sit down. India also... Please, please sit down. Government budgetary Absolutely, sir. In fact, in fact, it is the Indian Railways which gives 8,000 crores as dividends to the government. First time... And old... First, first time we have... Please, please sit down. Please, please. please. Sir, please. Indian Railways gives 8,000 crores as budgetary support to the Indian government. How can you have a smart city without a metro railway? Sir, you will allow me additional time to speak if you are allowed to speak. Tripathi ji, you have already spoken. Please sit down. You have a smart city without giving to metro railway. Sir, you will have to allow me additional time if this goes on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I was saying 17,000 crores is the budgeted amount to, uh, for which the fog vision and other safety precautions are, we, are, are projected to be bought at. However, it is in my knowledge
to my understanding, I believe that two or three European countries have given a proposal for developing an indigenous, as a joint venture, an indigenous system which will be owned and patented by the Indian Railways. However, the Indi it's been lying in the, board of, in the railway board for the last five or four or five years without a decision. You talk about optimizing your resources. For four to five years, important proposals such as this lie with the Indian Railways without taking a decision. I understand for taking a wrong decision, you will punish somebody. For taking a right decision, you will applaud somebody. But for five, five years, project projects will lie in the, rail, in the, in the, in the rail, railway board without a decision and there is no response at all from the rail, railway board. Sir, Indian Railways, to my knowledge, owns very little patents. We talk of technology development. Where are the patents that we own? Should we not, being one of the largest railway markets in the world, have developed technologies, developed our own patents, and we should be supplying today to the, e to the developing countries of Africa. We have supplied to some extent to Southeast Asia, but we should be, given our uh, proximity to Middle East and Africa, be one of the largest suppliers in developing nations, which I'm afraid we are not. Therefore, it brings me to the question of what, we are, what the RDSO has been doing all this while. Sir, the other way we can increase our operational profits is to opt utilize our resources optimally. Now, two-thirds of the revenues of Indian Railways comes from freight trains, and one-third comes from passenger trains. However, two-thirds of the trains which exist are passenger, one-third of the trains which exist are uh, freight. What are the concrete steps that the Honorable Minister wants to take to increase freight business, which has come down from 80% in the 60s to almost 25, 27 or 30% now? There is no master plan which has been given. The first thing I would have expected is a complete master plan with a 5-year, 10-year, 15-year, 20-year horizon would have been in place, or at least an announcement of it would be there because you are talking about projects which take at least five to seven to 10 years of gestation to come up. So if you don't have a 20 year outlook, how are you going to develop the railway infrastructure in a planned and organized manner to make it financially viable? Sir, the Honorable Minister has talked about cutting off all stoppages post September 30th, I think. Sir, I would like to remind him that Vita Mantri ne जूतों के दाम कम कर दिए हैं अपने ऊपर रहम नहीं खाते हमारे ऊपर रहम खाइए सर अगर आप हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी में छोटे छोटे स्टॉपेजेस भी नहीं रखने देंगे तो जूते बहुत आसानी से हमारे ऊपर हमारे जूते घिसेंगे हमारे ऊपर जूते मार जूते का मार आएगा तो आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू डोंट बी इन अ हरी टू डू दैट येस यू मस्ट इंश्योर द एफिशंसी ऑफ ऑल ट्रेन्स इज ऑप्टिम आई एग्री विथ यू ऑन दैट not just in uh, operational stops which have been done in the last six months. Why don't you take an uh, operational uh, audit to analyze what, uh, the efficiency factor of every train which exists? Of every train which exists, why don't, you take, why don't you take an audit on that? And then come up with a comprehensive plan. Why these season to season, year to year direction of Indian Railways? Why should you not have a holistic picture of where Indian Railway should go and which, where, where it should be 20 years from now. In that context, sir, without, I hope my friends from Bengal don't feel bad, from TMC don't feel bad, but the Durando, Duranto Express, started by them, have an occupancy of a mere 30%. Now, you could use the same Duranto Express to have a few stoppages and increase the occupancy. I'm not saying cancel the train. I'm saying increase the occupancy. So, a holistic picture has to be there not just take an ad hoc picture, which has come about after the, after I heard the budget speech of the Honorable Rail Minister. Sir, the Honorable Rail Minister talks about new technology, of putting in bullet trains. Now the revolution in Japan and China of bullet trains is to create semi-suburbs to major growth centers such as Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta. However, he chooses to pick the sector of Delhi, Ahmedabad, which, if I'm not mistaken, is about 500 kilometers, which would take two hours to 
travel on his first leg. Because I, I believe you have other plans also. That is not creating a semi-suburban structure. A semi-suburban structure is one which will allow the person to live in Agra, come to Delhi to work every morning in 45 minutes, and go back in the evening. Here again, sir, I appeal to the Honorable Minister to stick to his words, to walk his talk, and not bow down before his political necessities, because we all know the Honorable Prime Minister comes from Gujarat. Sir, the cost of creating a bullet train infrastructure is 150 crores per kilometer. You have given 100 crores, I'm assuming it's for a study or a preliminary study, not even a proper study. But the cost of increasing fast trains, the speed of trains from 80 kilometers to 160 to 200 kilometers is a mere 5 crores per kilometer. Are we really going to prioritize any other thing other than increasing the speed of our domestic existing trains. We have taken up six or seven sectors, a mere six or seven sectors, where at least 30 to 40 sectors, at least the Shatabdis, the Rajdhanis, the other major trains could have been sped up and you could have had more productivity. Please remember, sir, I keep stressing on the word productivity because our rate hike to increase railways' financial viability is being completely sideswept by the fact that the railway has inbuilt inefficiencies which they have not been able to take out in the last 30 years and the people of India, the poor people of India are paying for the railway's inefficiencies, are paying for the government's inefficiencies. Sir, having said all that I said, I would like to remind the Honorable Vail Minister that if it is not a populist budget, if he chooses to walk the talk of financial scrutiny, why is it that he's announced 58 new trains? Majority of which are in Western India. Majority of which have connection to Southern India, but have, has completely left, or almost completely left, the Eastern Indian sector out. I understand that he has his limitations, he has political compulsions, but sir, East India is an area which is, Eastern India has an area which has the highest potential for revenue generation. The rail linkages from mining area to port areas, these are financially viable sectors, Mr. Minister. You have forgotten about them. The amount of goods which will, uh, which will be transported in the mining, in the developed steel sector, have been neglected by the rail budget in this case, and he has succumbed, if I may say, very humbly say so, to his political consideration here. The government of Odisha had asked for some major projects. Angul Dubri Sukinda Road, 300 crores, mere 100 crores have been given. Khurda Road Balangir, which is an essential lifeline of almost 10 districts in Naxal infected, infested areas, a mere 100 crores has been given against a demand of 350 crores and a total project outlay of almost 1900 crores. And this is, sir, even after the government of Odisha has promised to give the land free and contribute 50% to the cost of building this uh, particular infrastructure. Even then, the Honorable Rail Minister and the Railway Department has decided to give, a, give it a paltry sum of 100 crores, which is almost 5% of the total project outlay. Sir, the Chief Minister has written to him about Haridas, Paradeep, Talcher, Vimalgar, both of which are grossly underfunded. Many other projects which exist here. Sir, another example of the gross inefficiency that the Indian Railways run in. Sir, in some time before independence, the Maharaja of Balangir Patna had given 850 acres to the Indian Railways to build a locomotive factory there, a repair workshop there. 650 work acres of which exist today vacant and contiguous to the railway station. The railway department has been putting Railway factories everywhere by acquiring land, trying to, which are being delayed by 5, 5, 10, 10 years. But they have not for a moment thought about looking at the land they have in Kantabhaji railway station in Balangir district. Sir, it is these inefficiencies which do not allow me to believe that the Honorable Railway Minister is actually walking his talk of trying to re re uh, 
trying to improve the financial viability, trying to improve the gross operating profit in the manner that it should be. He has made some suggestions. I support his suggestions. But I say, sir, he has not done enough. The key to improving railway infrastructure is not to burden just the consumer. Because if you burden the consumer, you must give similar amenities. When was the last time the design of railway stations, of uh, railway coaches were changed? We have only changed incrementally, year to year, incremental designs. Whereas when, when we go abroad, when we go outside the country, we see the kind of railway infrastructure which exists today. The Honorable Rail Minister talks about bringing 100 stations up to global standards on a FDI and a PPP level. Sir, we know that FDI, uh, PPP in the Indian Railways has been a, almost a failure. We talk about the airport railway link here in Delhi, a complete failure. The MMRDA in Mumbai took up one such project, a failure. The only time PPP in railways has worked is when we had the last, last mile linkage to ports, which are built by the port companies, and where the division or the, the division of uh, responsibilities is very clearly demarcated. Whenever there is a profit sharing or a revenue sharing model, it does not work. I do not believe he will be successful in bringing PPP to railway platforms. Sir, with these words, I would like to request the Honorable Rail Minister to not only talk about improving financial viability, to not only talk about ensuring that the railways continues to be a jewel for India, a jewel which we can demonstrate to our future generation, he needs to have major reforms done both on a railway board level, on a railway department restructuring level, and to ensure that the resources that we have right now are harnessed, utilized properly, and then only should he talk about raising rates against poor people of India. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chandra Kanta Kairai.